<laughs> Good evening, guys. Welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. Today we are here with Scott from Team 512. We are going to be doing an installation on the ZR1 right behind us. Stay tuned. It's going to be awesome. All right, so for the first part of this installation, we are going to need a plastic trim tool, a T15 Torx, and a 10 millimeter socket. First step, we're going to go ahead and remove the Pro Clip mount. Scott is going to do it here because he is Vanna White for this situation. Very easy to remove, opposite of installation, which if you guys have seen that video, I'll link it up to the top right of this one. So step two is going to be to remove the three T15 screws from the bottom side of the center console lid. Now, you don't have to worry about the lid falling right off as soon as you remove all three, and I'll show you why once I work it loose here. See this here? There's a post that fits right into the lid and holds it in place once the screws are removed. The next step is going to be to remove the side panel trim, which is obviously right beside the center console lid. It is just held in with clips, but there is a angled front clip at the very front part of the car. So you'll want to remove it from the back part first, like Scott's doing here on camera. That is the angled clip that you're going to want to make sure you do not break. Next is going to be the two 10 millimeter fasteners behind the center console lid that's actually covered with a piece of plastic here. You'll use a trim pry tool remover to pop that out of the way. And underneath is your two 10 millimeter nuts. So the next step is to remove the shift boot. So we're going to go ahead and grab that ring and turn it counterclockwise to expose the screw underneath. And that is going to be a T25 Torx. So once you get the screw loose, you're actually going to want to remove it all the way so that you can get the shift knob off the shifter. The next part is going to be to remove the top of the center console here. So Scott is going to demonstrate exactly what we have to do. Yep. So typically I like to start with the uh, pry tool generally down in this area here, if you can get it in, but really this piece is just snapped in. So, there is no right way or wrong way, just as gentle as you can be. We'll start over here this time where we have a little bit of separation already and you can hear the snapping sound, meaning we are lifting it out. You got to be careful because there are a couple plugs going into the parking brake and the mode select here. And there's also another cable that goes into your 12 volt power up here. When you get to about this angle, you're going to want to pull back towards you a little bit and it'll release from the dash. And then you can reach underneath here and disconnect your electrical connectors. All right, so here's a close look at both of the electrical connectors. This one's for the parking brake. We're just gonna squeeze and pull down and do the same with the drive mode select. And there we go. All right, right here you see the connector for the 12 volt power in blue right there. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off next. And we can remove the top part of the center console. In order to remove the bottom part of the center console, you have a few 10 millimeter fasteners to remove. You have two up front here and you have two in the middle. Now also take note to how some of this wiring is ran. So when you put everything back together, you make sure that the wiring is back in the same place. Right here you see there's a channel where this wire runs along. You'll also have to disconnect this connector here, which we will do right now. And we'll go ahead and remove these 10 millimeter fasteners. All right, now we're almost to the point where we're ready to lift the bottom part of the center console out. But one thing you have to note is right down in here, there is a connector that is pressed in with a plug into the center console, which you'll have to remove. And this forked trim tool does a great job of allowing you to do that. Now we should be able to lift this right out of the car after we disconnect this final connector. And this final 12 volt connector. Now we have some of this insulation that we can remove and get out of the way. Here is the top of the tunnel on a C7 Corvette. And of course, 
the wiring harness and we'll just move that to the side. So now that we have the stock shifter exposed, we're gonna go ahead and remove this rubber isolator boot here so that we can gain access to the four 10 millimeter nuts. And this just slides over these little hooks here and they're not on here very tight. With the 10 millimeter nuts off, you can now lift the boot off of the stock shifter. <laughs> and this was the piece that was, of course, mounted uh, above the shifter and below the rubber isolator boot. Here is the stock shifter. So now we're gonna take off these four 10 millimeter screws. And we're gonna need to break the seal a little bit there to get it up and out of the car. So just a little bit of effort to do that. And then we can go ahead and lift it up and out. So there's the stock shifter in your C7 Corvette. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is remove the lower shift box here. And there are three T40 bolts that we're gonna to have to remove. One is for the linkage, and then these two are to hold the box into place. <laughs> Told you, man. You guys saw it. That's how you remove the lower box. There you go. Yeah, you're gonna remove the uh, bolts that hold it in place and it's gonna feel like it's still bolted in, but you gotta work it pretty hard and it'll come out. So the next step is actually gonna be the Dynamat. We gotta cut this in half. So this is supplied with the shifter from MGW. We are gonna go ahead, cut this thing right up the center. So with this being cut in half, what we have to actually do is fit it specifically between these two blocks down here. And as you can see, being cut in half, it's not quite able to fit. It looks like I need to cut off about another inch. So now you can see it's going to fit through those two blocks and we're going to push it in. You'll actually feel it hitting another piece of uh, heat shielding. Then we're going to fold it down over this little cup right there where the stock shifter fit into. And this is really just to reduce noises and heat. Like I said, this stuff is all provided to you from MGW. So we'll just press this down into place till it hits that little cup where the stock shifter sat into. And you're just gonna fold it down over that. And you wanna push this stuff down pretty well, guys, cause this is kind of like a pretty strong adhesive on the back that you'll wanna make sure is perfectly stuck down into place, just like that. So the second piece of Dynamat is gonna go down along the side, just like this. There are some brake lines it looks like down there. So you're gonna to wanna to work this around them and it is gonna be kind of tough once you remove this paper because it's gonna to wanna to stick to everything. So we got both pieces of Dynamat, the top part and the lower part that actually goes between the torque tube and what looks like brake lines. The next part is gonna be the foamy stuff here. This is actually kind of some more additional heat shielding and we're gonna put the first piece down on this side here. The best tip I could give you guys is make sure you have the shift linkage moved from here over to here. Let it rest on one of those blocks while you're doing that. That way it's out of the way of your hands while you're applying this heat shielding. Now the next part is gonna be the same size piece again. It's gonna slide down on this side, right down where you put the other piece of Dynamat. So we got the both lower pieces of heat shielding on. Now it's the Tetris shaped piece that gets to go in next. It's gonna fit just like this, right in between those two blocks, and then you're just gonna wrap the rest down around. And that's it. So we are ready for the box install now. The next step is to assemble the lower box. So all these parts over here come from MGW, as you can see, very high quality, solid billet aluminum stuff. And what we got to take from the stock box, which is much junkier, I guess, we got to unscrew these two Phillips head screws to allow this mechanism to come out. So this is basically what controls the shifter linkage in the actual car. We're going to keep that part into the MGW shifter. So by taking that off, obviously that will allow the entire rod to come the whole way out. This gold part here is actually the bottom part of the box. So once we get this installed, this whole thing flips over. The shifter rod 
has to pass through these bushings that MGW provides you, which are pre-lubricated, so you don't have to worry about grease before just installing them. So we'll just slide these on here, like so. This will go in here, and like I said, this box is actually upside down. So we're gonna place it just like this in the actual box. And once we flip this over into the car, the shifter linkage should be pointing up in this situation. So it's ready to be accepted into the car, into the back of where the shifter linkage is at. So once we get this in place, you wanna make sure these bushings are firmly snapped down into place where they're gonna go so you're not pinching anything once you install the bottom gold part. So just like that, then we will use the provided lower bolts, which already have a form of Loctite on them, and we'll just tighten those down. So when we're tightening down the screws on the lower box, you want to do it in kind of a crisscross pattern like you would install on a wheel. They actually provide you with the Allen key wrench to do it because they don't want you putting a lot of torque on these. So just what you can get on this is sufficient and we're going to tighten them, like I said, in a crisscross style patterns. Just get them started with your fingers just like so and then we're going to tighten them all down. This is really just to add even pressure throughout so nothing gets pinched, nothing gets tightened down too much or strips any threads. You can actually feel these bottom out. So once they're completely in there, this won't let you apply too much torque because the whole thing kind of bends. That's why they provide you with this. So this is ready to go in the car. It's gonna be installed like this and the shifter linkage will connect back here. Next step, we're gonna go ahead and install the lower box that we just put together. And for the most part, this just slides in. So right there's the linkage. We'll just make sure that that makes its way into there first. And then we'll put the whole box down inside. Now we're gonna use the T40 bolts we took out earlier. All of these have a little bit of Loctite on them, but with the kit comes some more Loctite. So we're gonna refresh that and then install these bolts. Once we get the bolts in here just loosely, basically, we need to center up the actual linkage and everything, and MGW provides a tool for that. So what we're gonna do is literally just set this thing on here, and it will kind of center the linkage for us to the point where we're able to bolt everything down. So there's two Allen head screws that you put into this. That way you can verify everything is centered up. Then you can start torquing all the bolts down. So we got the alignment tool in. These are just two Allen key screws that go in real loosely. But once we get that in, it holds the shift rod centered. So you can then move the entire box back and forth because these up here have adjustment slots that will allow you to move the whole thing back and forth. And once you do that, you wanna make sure down in here that the actual shift linkage and the shifter rod have the little cutout in the shifter rod will fit perfectly in this hole. So that hole has basically got a screw that goes into it and that notch in the shift rod will actually let this screw hold it into place. So you wanna make sure once you put this alignment tool in that you slide this back and forth until that little notch in the shift rod is perfectly in the linkage hole. I'm going to go ahead and tighten down these bolts now after I tighten down the linkage. Then we're going to remove the alignment tool and get the shifter installed. First, we're going to go ahead and put this rubber gasket in there. This is to help reduce vibrations. Here is the MGW shifter. As you can see, it is pre-greased. You want to get as much of this grease out and on the ball as possible just to maintain some smoothness. So someone's going to have to stick their finger in there and rub it on here. Not me. <laughs> I think that's enough. I don't know that you necessarily need to go digging in that bag. You don't think? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. So we got the shifter installed. Next is to go ahead and put in the four Allen screws on all four corners here. And what's really interesting is once we tighten these down, which we'll do again in a crisscross pattern, is we actually have these little set screws down here. Now these actually screw right into this Allen screw and it stops it from ever being able to back out. That's really awesome. Definitely, as Scott said, over-engineered, but it's one of those things that now you'll never have to worry about this. You'll never have to take off your center console and tighten this stuff up ever again because it's going to stay tight. Over-engineered is a good term, <laughs> just to be clear. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Under-engineered is never a good term. 
And again, we're using the supplied T-handle wrench to make sure that these are not necessarily over tightened. We got all four Allen screws tightened down. Now we're gonna use the Allen key and tighten down these set screws. Two in the back, two in the front. Right, so we got everything installed and the next step is gonna be to go ahead and cut the factory dust boot slash sound boot, heat boot, whatever this might actually be. There's two pieces of rubber that sit on top of the shifter after we get everything installed. So this part, we're actually gonna cut right along the factory line here. And this is gonna allow us to basically slip it over top of the shifter and reuse the stock boot for you know, dust purposes, heat purposes, like I said. You're gonna want something pretty sharp because this is kind of thick rubber, almost plastic. There we go. So we cut the first boot, which is this ring here, just one ring off and it will fit over top of the MGW shifter now. But this boot goes on top of that boot and this one isn't gonna fit either. Now, all of the other MGW instructions out there that I've seen don't show even using this again. I wanna try to keep it as you know dust-free, noise-free as possible. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna alter this one enough that I'll be able to use it as well. What I'm gonna do here is actually cut along this kind of square edge here and just cut that out. I think that will be enough to get it over top of the shifter. So we went ahead and put the actual shaft on here. So this is for the shifter itself. This is where your shift knob will connect to. And you have to get these holes on the side lined up pretty straight. What that's gonna do is allow you to put the stock shift knob on and then use the holding screw right into the side of this new shaft. For the most part, this was pretty easy. You gotta use this set nut right here to kind of adjust when this whole shaft gets tight so that these holes here are, like I said, at the very far side. Next, we're gonna go ahead and put the boots on that we cut. So the first one is gonna be the more plasticky or more rigid version. This is the one we cut just one ring out of. So this will go on just like this over top of the shifter and just like that onto these studs. So we got the initial dust boot on, held on with the four 10 millimeter nuts. Now it is time to throw on the last dust cover. Like I said, this part is not really necessary. MGW doesn't call for this, but I figured I have it. I'll just cut that hole out a little bit and we'll use it because if nothing else, it's additional dust and noise protection. So that is just held on with the clips right here. And that's it. This thing is freaking awesome feeling though. I mean, just listen to that. It's gear, 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 like no problems at all. This thing is going to be fantastic. All right, guys. So that's going to do it for the installation. Uh, we're going to go ahead and off camera install the console lid and the, the center console top and all that stuff. It's basically going to be the opposite of disassembly. So. I don't want to bore you guys with that stuff, but we're going to hook all that back up and I'm going to give you some final shots afterwards and my opinions after we drive it. And here's the final product, guys. So shift knob is installed. Center console is all laid out and installed. And man, does this thing just respond totally different than the stock shifter. That has such a mechanical feel to it now. Rowing your own gears has never felt so good. Definitely a faster shift with this thing. When I first saw the video from Steve and he was screaming with excitement, I, I can't say I got it. At first I was like, can it really be that good? It is, guys. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. So right after the installation, like I said earlier, it's not that difficult, but it is time consuming. And I noticed an absolute huge difference in the shifting capability of this car. The ZR1 is already a monster from factory, but when you add in a shifter that really just gives you that crispness, that rawness, you feel so much more connected to the car. What do you think, Scott? Yeah, I gotta agree with you. For the level of difficulty of the install, like he said, it wasn't too difficult. 
You always need to be careful when you're removing some of those interior pieces so you don't snap any of the clips that hold everything together. But for the level of difficulty, which you know we felt wasn't too bad, there's a huge payoff in the way that the car feels and performs now. Absolutely. I want to give a huge shout out to MGW Shifters. I was not sponsored by them for this video, but I want to give them a shout out because they create an absolute phenomenal product. And something tells me Scott's going to have one in his Grand Sport very soon. But anyway, guys, if you liked what you saw in this video, give me a big thumbs up. Of course, go over to Team 512's YouTube channel. Give him a big thumbs up. Give him a subscribe, too. I mean, look at the guy. He comes out here. He helps me out with this stuff. He deserves it. If you guys have any questions about the install or anything we talked about here today, go ahead and shoot them in the comment section way, way down here and let me know. I'll answer anything you guys may have for me. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I have loads of C7 content and C8 content coming very soon. You're not going to want to miss. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next upload. See ya.